Sky is going to join us in a few seconds hopefully but hi hi what's hi. up what are you doing hi this is um this is like my second time ever doing a live so you're going to have to bear with me and how technologically challenged i am <laughs> but hi hello okay i think someone said uh, talk about your ngo and i'm not sure if it was about samvad or recover so let's talk about both why don't you talk about recover so recover actually isn't an ngo uh, no no, no. i don't know it's a Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But um, yeah, that was not an idea. Our basic ideology is expressing the things that need to be talked about through art. We're a core of eleven uh, members. Most of us are LGBTQ plus, and um, just that's what we're here for. How about Samvad? Uh, okay, so uh, Samvad is an NGO, that, and we recently got certified. So we are like we're now a certified NGO. We're very happy about that. So it's a, it's an NGO that's centered around mental health, and we offer free counseling, free online counseling to those people who maybe can't pay for it or have trouble, you know, getting it. There's a lot of stigma. Yeah, we're doing some pretty cool stuff. So yeah. Oh shit! I okay. completely forgot. We do free counseling too. I completely forgot about that. Thank you for the mic. Do very yeah. Check out both. Check out Rakha. Go check out Samba. This is artists supporting artists in this house. We don't bring each other down. Exactly. Uh, so you told me your pronouns. So I should. I'm. You can. You can just use she slash her. And you are non-binary. Can you talk about like before coming out versus after coming out? How that? How how your mental health can be affected? Honestly, uh, before I came out as non-binary, how much I would overcompensate uh, for not being yeah. a girl. I would dress overtly feminine to try to convince myself that hey, you're a girl. It's fine. I would look at myself and be like, "What are you?" Because I didn't know what non-binary was. The thing with non-binary people is, most of us at least have had to educate ourselves on our own existence, and that would affect my. A relationship with myself a lot, except then I realize that shit, non-binary exists. Sexuality is fluid, and this is something that I've learned about. And I'm not kidding. In lock in this lockdown, I attended a seminar. It was the it was genuinely the first time that I learned that gender is fluid, and there is a spectrum. For me, as a healthcare professional, it's really important because anyone can come to you, right? And you have to know how to treat them. You have to know how to be inclusive. When I educate someone on Uh, specifically, the gender spectrum. The example I always take is a color wheel. If masculine traits and or boy uh, is blue, and feminine traits and or girl is pink, uh, there are so many colors that are mixtures of blue and pink. But there are so many colors that don't need blue or pink. Some colors are not even colors; they're just lack of colors, like black. Some colors are all colors put together, like white. So it's like a, it's like color wheel. Just because someone told you that, huh, you were born in pink, doesn't mean you aren't allowed to explore yellow or brown or black or blue. You are. Your gender does not have to be the same as your sex. Maybe your sex is what you are born with, but your gender is what you decide. And if if you feel like it coincides with your sex, then that's great. I think that means you're cis. A lot of people don't know what cis means. I just remember because a lot of times it's like, "What's cis?" and I'm like, "Do uh, cis gender or cis uh, is basically a CIS, not SIS, non-trans." So if again, like uh, like she said, um, if your gender and your sex coincide, then you're cis gender or cis. How was the experience for you um, after coming out? I was so scared. I was so scared because I. Would look at my body and I was just like, "Why are you this feminine?" After I came out and after I realized that I don't owe anyone shit, I've genuinely been able to feel better about myself. It was very like, "Hey, shit! Will people accept me? Will they not accept me? Will people even believe me? You know, will they use the right pronouns?" It was very, very scary, and I honestly didn't even want to come out. I think after coming out, I've genuinely. My mental health has gotten better. My acceptance of myself has gotten better. My body image issues have gotten better, and that's not to say they still don't suck. They do, but it's just a lot better. I'm so happy about that. Can you talk about it? How was how was the reaction? Yeah. Well, the first time, a couple of people that were very close to me, I told them that, "Hey, listen, I think 
happened by i blinked and two weeks later the entire grade knew lot is like giving me a lot of shit for it and um not to lie my grades 8 through 10 were terrible they were horrible and it led me to do some very dumb shit i don't regret it uh, and i'm not ashamed of it because we aren't ashamed of our mental health in this house i <laughs> have been actively working on it when i came out as non binary I think the first person I came out to was my best friend. They took it really well because I mean they're not binary too. They looked at me and they were like, "I'm proud of you. I, I, I'm proud of you." And I was like, "Shit, is this what acceptance feels like?" <laughs> you know, the one-year anniversary of me picking the name Sky uh, was a year ago on February 16th. But I'm really glad yeah. that my coming out. I was. I'm privileged to have the coming out I had. I'm, I'm very privileged. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I mean I think that's that's very ideal. I mean I think it should be like, oh hi, I'm this, and then everyone else should be like, oh great, because you said that you weren't sure. I don't. I mean a lot of people assume that if you're not straight or if you're not cis, then you should just know what you are. But you should just be so sure that okay, I'm definitely this. But it's I don't think that's true. I think it's so okay to just not know no, no, that's and figure yeah. it out along the way. You don't need labels. Just golden freaking rule. If you aren't comfortable with it, you don't need labels. If someone's questioning and they realize that shit, I am straight, that is valid. And someone's questioning and it's like, no, I am cisgender, that is valid. Just because you're questioning doesn't mean you immediately know what you are. It took me five years and so much questioning to be like, what are you? And I realized that I'm pan. If you weren't attracted to a certain sex or gender, cool. If you are now, cool. It's fluid. It shifts. It morphs, and it's it's great. I feel like I feel like the biggest misrepresentation is that they just assume that the person who is is just born with it. Like they just know. In movies, like I, I'm really glad you brought you brought that up because um yeah they they talk about it as if like hi, I'm 13 years old and I've always known I'm gay. Like shut up. Yeah. That's barely ever what happens. Like you can you can know that you're not straight, but waking up. And knowing that, ha, huh, this is the label I'm going to use because this is what I am. That's not realistic. I feel like the worst thing they do is they take this character and they say that okay, they're gay, and then their entire life, their entire storyline is based on this one thing. I mean, there is so much to a person, exactly. and you can't. I cannot believe I'm about to bring up Riverdale. I can't believe it. I can't. <laughs> But Cheryl Blossom. Was a genuine, incredible character. Like her character yeah. arc, she was evil and manipulative, and she was she was great as a character. She was written very well, and then she came out as a lesbian, and that's all she became. And it it hurts because hello, we have other personality traits too. Yeah, yeah. I guess it really influences the way you see things. So media should be a little bit more. Authentic, and there's something yeah. in um, in the uh, community of lesbians. I am not a lesbian, but um, when I used to identify as one, uh, I realized that there was such a thing as a gold star lesbian. Right now, a gold star lesbian is a lesbian that has never been with men. That's toxic. I know I, there are people that live their entire life. They get married to men, and they still. Are lesbians? Is it normal to feel embarrassed about coming out? Yeah, it sucks that it's normal, but it's normal because uh, we're meant to feel deeply ashamed about who we are. Okay, so going back to school, you can t- tell me, tell me what you thought about in school. Oh, you always feel like you have to be someone you're not. You do. And exactly, it's yeah. uh, right now the people that are in my batch, at least uh, in Jamnabai. There are I know LGBTQ plus people in Jamnabai. A lot of people have come out since um, I was in school, but it's still a very very toxic place. Uh, there are people that use slurs so rampantly. Their regular vocabulary is just chock full of slurs. Um, but my college, uh, Sapphire College for Women, it's glorious. It, it is. Glorious. We have a queer collective. You know, we have uh, LGBTQ plus supporting posters all over college, and yeah. uh, we have. Uh, so you know the fist of Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have five fists. Uh, four with different skin tones, and the middle uh-huh. fist is a trans pride flag. So I love college, and I feel like on some level, all of us have had. some sort of trauma not trauma but struggles that we've carried yeah. from school and so many people come into their own after school it's it's yeah. 
not even funny so if if anyone over here is having a bad time in school it's there is so much out there that is because school can be really really bad yeah. really it can the thing that they don't tell you is yeah your school years will be the best years of your life if you fit a certain mold yeah right if you're straight if you're cisgender if you're popular i know for a fact that my parents won't stop me if i want to marry a woman uh, which is still privilege so i can still come out to them and tell them and you know the only thing that i'll get fucked in the ass is my mental health which is still fine no it's not fine for other people i'm saying i can deal with it because i go to therapy if you aren't in a place that is safe for you it is okay to not come out i mean so i hate that i'm true. saying this but i know i know people have found it more comfortable abroad yeah than here and i guess that speaks a lot about the situation in this country right now feel free to experiment feel free to take your time um live it out it's your life you know do what you want kiss whoever you want don't kiss whoever you want if you feel like you're ace and you don't want physical anything cool we will give you a high five that that's what we will do because we accept everyone and we love everyone if your brain is pretty to me and if you can hold good conversation with me that's all i need what do you think of the slurs that i use cuz i ca- i can i don't know i don't know how many times i've heard someone say if i can say it the word chakka no I, so oh, many I times don't yeah i shouldn't say it, it. Yeah, yeah, but what do you think about those slurs and how they Honestly, affect someone? Who- as someone who has been the recipient of far too many slurs, um, just if you aren't allowed to reclaim it, just fucking don't. The amount of straight people that say the f slur uh, as in faggot, it's not even funny. Like you're not allowed to use it, and everyone's like, how can you use it and I can't use it? Can- only black people can say the n word. That's beautiful. That I want. I want that relationship with, like a grandparent. Uh, someone in the comments said, "I told my grandmother I like girls," and then they talked about actresses they found attractive. What would be the most comfortable way you'd want to be? So just, just for anyone, if anyone ever comes out to you, the best way to react. Uh, honestly, the best reaction ever to have for me, at least, is telling me that hi, you're accepted, you're valid, you're loved, and you're safe. Let's talk about the bad side of social media. and how that can affect your mental health the amount of times like lgbt plus creators that uh, i know personally and i know of were given a lot of shit like i've gotten countless comments like oh yas queen like bitch and i know that that's supposed to be great and all but i specifically mention they them no feminine terms social media makes it so easy to misgender and dead name someone and that really fucks with your mind you can say what you want i know i'm not binary and that's something that i've conditioned my brain to do a lot of people aren't comfortable enough in their gender to f- be told shit like that as it is you shouldn't be a lot of people have this habit where if you were if you didn't like that someone said queen they'd be like oh they just get offended at everything and It's kind of like no, you don't have to take it like that. You can just say that okay, I said something wrong, and I learned from it, and that's it. Homophobia is gay. <laughs> okay, that's um, homophobia is gay is a hashtag I use under all of my uh, posts because homophobia is gay. Why are you so obsessed with what people are doing with other people? Everyone relates LGBTQ plus with love is love. I mean, yeah, love is love, and that that's it. But also, we talk about gender. Also, yeah. we talk about romance. We talk about different kinds of attraction in the first place. You know, we're not just sex. Yeah. Okay. So there was this interview, and they were talking about about how in the LGBTQ community, there's actually a lot of uh, fo- there's also a lot of racism. If you think mm-hmm. about it, it's not it's not just one very accepting community that accepts everything. There is still racism. Mm-hmm. It is still hard. It's called I think it's called intersection intersectionality. I learned about this. Mm-hmm. Because you, you're everyone has different levels. There's so many things that give you different privilege. So it's not, it's okay. What can society people do to be better allies? Research, research. This was a medical webinar, so they were talking about how in hospitals there's always a question because there's male wards and there's female wards, and it's about which bathroom should we send them to. Just ask, ask them where they want to go, and it's done. Just talk. 
that's it just it's okay it's okay to not know things i didn't know things so yeah. no you're not, you're doing really well but um honestly yeah. uh, if someone tells you that they go by a different name acknowledge it and use it uh, could you maybe tell us about gender euphoria Uh, euphoria as a word is basically like great feelings, right? Ecstatic. Hmm. Sometimes when I genuinely look at myself in the mirror and I was like, bro, I can't tell if I'm a boy or a girl. Like <laughs> that's gender euphoria to me. If any of you ever need love, acceptance, validation, please text me. I will give you all of it. I have loads, and I love sharing my love. If you just need someone to talk to, you can always check out Recover or Samvad. Gonna re-say this. If anyone here is not following Samvad, please go follow Samvad. They're doing incredible work. Help artists support artists. Help platforms yes, support each other. Thank you so much for this live. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.